On one side of the Sunshine State of Florida, the most prestigious short track race in America, the 53rd running of the Snowball Derby is happening. On the other side of the virtual state of Florida, the drivers of the SB Cup Series with six different winners. Now, round number seven, prepare to take on a new road course of its kind since last year competing on the Roval. It's test the Labor Day facility that was launched for the Cup Series, the Daytona International Speedway Road Course. It should be an exciting 30 four lap feature as round number seven of the s &B Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters gets underway tonight the Hornady Ammo 122. Our broadcast coverage from Daytona Beach, Florida virtually due to iRacing is brought to you by Swag and LSIR TV. Check out the new website at LiveSimRacingTV.com. I am Wesley Outland live from Pensacola, Florida nestled high 30 stories in the air at my hotel room in the Panhandle joined alongside my buddy, and we're finally in the same time zone from Wichita Falls, Texas. He's in the producer seat and as co announcer, Charles Wooten. Charles, uh, Charles, are you there? Are you going yeah, to talk to me? Yeah, we lost you for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, unwashed by here tonight, so uh, different, but man, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this, uh, this particular race. I know this is the first time uh, they have been to this track, uh, and uh, to my knowledge, I believe Northwest ran this one, but I wasn't in the announcer's chair for that, so this is the first time I've got to announce the Daytona Road Course, and not That's to right. be confused with the Roval, by the way. That is actually trademarked with uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. This is just a yes. road course, which means if Aunt Kathy out there watching, you won't have to hear us say Roval too many times because this isn't a Roval, so we won't be saying Roval. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you're exactly right. You're exactly right. This is a the Daytona International Speedway road course, and again, we're going to see these drivers go at it for. 122 miles, 34 laps in the Hornady MO 122. Hey, as we get ready to go to racing here tonight, let's take a look at the weather conditions virtually on the iRacing server as we prepare for tonight's event. Round number seven of the SMB Cup Series. And uh, again, thanks to sawblade.com. It is 74 degrees. I promise you virtually it's a lot more warmer than it is real in Florida, as well as most of the world right now with that massive cold front that's coming through track temp at 89 degrees about 20 degrees uh, up than what the ambient temperature is virtual wind speed right now at two miles per hour conditions partly cloudy but right now sunshine glaring over the road course so tonight's format let's take a look at that real quick as well as these drivers get ready to go racing they are continuing with a practice session just about to wrap up two lap qualifying coming up when we return and then it's 122 miles 34 laps probably not a visit by the banana republic flag this race should go by fairly quickly Let's yeah, take a look at the point standings as we look at this event. And again, Charles, I'll throw it back to you, bud. Caleb Smith, Ross Tatum, Joshua Altus, Matthew Gilliams, Tucker Wingo, Spencer Hardison, all winners. And they're right now in the top six, and they go to the postseason. Yeah, and, and we got a minute to talk about these here. Uh, is, of course, you just mentioned those top six are locked in on wins. Uh, of course, there's only four spots left. They only do, uh, there's no round of 16, round of 12. It's the round of That's 10 right. to start the chase. Six of those spots have been taken by a win. We'll see if somebody like Jack Ely, who's in seventh, Jacob Grant can do it. And you know, you talk about Jacob Grant though, his uh, chances of winning here tonight are very slim. I dare say a slim to none, as he has to serve a pass-through penalty for having too many incidents at Dover. A pass-through penalty when your likelihood of getting a caution, Wesley, at a road course like this uh, is basically zero. He is in yeah. for a long, long haul to try to get to the front. Yeah, it's, it's going to suck for sure. That letter word is true right now. And by the way, not only are we live on LSR TV, live sim racing TV.com, the new website. We're also live on CRN Sports, the official voice of live sim racing. And for those that are joining us on iRacing Live, we are coming to you as well. Uh, by the way, a couple of pre-race notes uh, for today.
Lights broadcast, a news and note of this event off last week due to Thanksgiving. The drivers are recapping from Dover and the storylines. As you just mentioned, Caleb Smith in the number 12 for CEM Motorsports scored their first career Cup Series win at Dover after surviving a string of late race cautions. Uh, drivers and storylines coming into this event include Jacob Grant, Pillsbury, uh, has a pass-through penalty for too many caution points accumulated at Dover two weeks ago. That's going to put him really, really in the back. Uh, first SMB Cup Series appearance at a Daytona road course, as I mentioned on the air. Only road course run in series history was last season a Charlotte but I mentioned that, by the way. Matt Williams on a statistic was the winner of that show. Will have a seventh different winner in seven races. Charles, will we see that tonight? You know, I honestly think we will. And not just for the sheer fact that it's been that way all season. But, again, it's a new track that we have not seen before. And that we did, like you mentioned a second ago, looking at your fast drivers, Deweese, Coleman, Dyer, Shearwood. These are four guys that have not won this season, and they were the four fastest drivers. This is also a track where if you're fast, you kind of have an advantage. It's not like a Talladega or Daytona, uh, you know, where, you know, Lady Luck can bite you for somebody else's mess. You can get a sizable lead if you're Deweese and you're out front and not really have to deal with a whole lot of traffic because you're probably going to get spread out. So as long as you hit your marks, don't make any mistakes, you could potentially lock yourself in here tonight. That's exactly right. And uh, as uh, we continue to, you know, set the, the bar uh, for this event, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be fun to, to definitely keep an eye and watch and see what these – drivers are definitely going to do this again. We do have qualifying on the speedway right now. Uh, by the way, um, you know, uh, we mentioned drivers that we mentioned earlier that have won races. Uh, other drivers to watch tonight include Braxton DeWeese. Could he finally win on the series? Evan Coleman has come very close. So has Matt Dyer, Robert Sherwood. And they, by the way, were the fastest four in the session earlier uh, at the Daytona International Speedway Road Course. So keep an eye on them. Uh, news and notes continuing along for this event. We'll get the keys to the race before the drop of the green flag. This is the Daytona Beach Road Course, uh, race seven of the season for the SB Cup Series, presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Again, for the Hornady MO120. Two race length again before laps 122 miles. The drivers have been virtually given five total sets of tires, four sets in the pit area, plus the set they're racing on at the drop of the green. Fuel window will be between nine and ten laps. So we will be seeing and calling green flag pit stops, and they are only using 50% fuel capacity, not at 100, 50% fuel, which basically is the equivalent of nine to ten laps, where a full tank of fuel could be between 20 to 25 laps. And uh, they are giving one fast repair. Charles, that's the tell of the tape as we are still watching qualifying ongoing. Yeah, and Braxton DeWeese going to go ahead and uh, shut it down there uh, with a 151. And other types are starting to come in. Another one uh, we know is faster than 99, a Wingo, as uh, we switch over to him. A minute 28 so far. Again, nearly two a minute laps. It's going to take uh, quite a bit of time to get around this track. Uh, you know, Minute 53, 54, that's about a pace lap. If you're at the Daytona International Speedway Oval, that's going to be a right. actual racing lap here. So a little something different. Uh, you know, we're not used to the uh, road course style things. They're going to be, uh, I wouldn't say a long race. It's still going to be a, uh, a fairly short race for only 34 laps, but some really, really long drawn out times. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. As uh, we right now see Braxton DeWeese at the top of the board, one minute fifty-one point four four five seconds. Again, one fifty-one point four four five for the driver of the number fifteen, uh, 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 Jack Ely, right with him in second best. You see the bar uh, on the upper left of the monitor. You see the green. The green bars recognize drivers that have won races in the regular season, and they are advancing to the postseason. By the way, we are halfway through the regular season tonight. Seven races down, seven races rain until the sixth playoff series of a 20-race schedule. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the drivers in green are playoff drivers. They advance. 
advance to the postseason. Ones in blue are inside the top 10 of the point standings. And for those that are in black, honestly, right now, mathematically, they are eliminated unless they get a W, Charles. They win, they're in. Yeah, you definitely want to get the win. The, the win will lock you in, and that is the uh, you know the, the only way you officially lock yourself in. You could get on on points, but uh, you know, let's face it, nobody wants to have to lock yourself in on points. They want to lock themselves in with a win. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, personally, I would have liked to have done it early in the season, so you really had the rest of the season to experiment with stuff. Uh, is uh, the 99 of Wingo is going to uh, slide it sideways. But, uh, you know, you could still do it and walk yourself in, and you just don't have that extra time to kind of, uh, you know, experiment with things like some of these other drivers right. have that uh, locked in earlier. Yeah, it's just after uh, 9 o'clock Eastern time. I'm an Eastern time zone person. I'm, I mean, I'm, a, I'm literally suffering from jet lag and being an hour behind schedule on everything. So, uh, Charles, I'm, I'm in your time zone brothers so we're right together as it is right now nine o'clock eastern time eight o'clock central where we are in the time zone i'm at pensacola florida in the panhandle ready to handle broadcast uh, obligations for speed 51 tv you're racing home for the 53rd snowball derby and uh in against into that uh covering lsr tv and honestly, Charles, it's a long day. I've had a lot of stuff going on since 8 o'clock this morning, being on camera and doing interviews. And I'm surprised I still have a voice. But uh, I had to keep it. Be ready to call this race with you tonight. Yeah, it's, uh, again, hopefully it'll be a fairly quick race. I know they mentioned, uh, I would say, I think it's three or four cars. Uh, if it was involved, that they might throw a caution. But uh, honestly, uh, Wesley, you've been to the road course races. I've done plenty of them myself over the time. I really don't see us having anything more than maybe, you know, some self spins. You might see one or two cars get tangled up on the initial start. But after that, I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. We are watching qualifying continue on for these drivers as they... Work their way. There's Brock and Packard to the number 24. <clears throat> right now, he's ninth best, 154.290 seconds. That's currently where we're at right now. And we're going to keep an eye on them and see what these drivers do as we continue to watch them working around the racetrack. Good show they're putting it on. Yeah, they are 11 people have qualified so far. There's more than out there that have. And actually, uh, maybe it's 12. Packard's going to uh, get the uh, rear end of that car just a little bit loose as we switch over to Coleman in that 51 machine. Uh, and, uh, you know, we didn't have a chance to get it in here, so it's uh, why we're not showing it. But you see that uh, car there, Wesley? Look at the side of it. Look at the hood of it. They came out with a yep. brand new logo for CEM Motorsports. They were teasing us with it last week. And they came out with it this week, uh, you know, not saying their other logo was uh, less than uh, appealing, but this one is definitely uh, better. In addition to our broadcast coverage for the B Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters and the Hornady, um, I'm at the Hornady Ammo 122, uh, we also want to acknowledge Mountaineer Outfitters. Mountaineer Outfitters is a sporting goods and firearms retailer located in Newland, North Carolina. They carry a variety of of ammunition as well as trail cameras optics and more and they are proud to be a partner of the appalachian hauler hunters again vi visit them in my neck of the woods in the tar hill state newland north carolina again that is mountaineer outfitters we will mention them throughout the broadcast as well hey it looks like qualify On quick break. When we come back, starting lineup, and we go green from the road course at Daytona, LSR TV, CRN Sports, and I Racing Live. The DK4 by NAP represents the next level of broadheads, providing you with fixed and mechanical blade technology in one devastating head. Available in both crossbow and compound models, the DK4 features a pivoting main blade, which eliminates deflection off bone and maintains momentum. 
while delivering true field point accuracy as well as two deploying bleeder blades for an inch and a quarter secondary cutting diameter, equating to devastating wound channels. And with an internal blade retention system, there are no O-rings, collars, or rubber bands, just the confidence knowing that the blades will open on impact no matter your target. Featuring a bone-crushing trophy tip and diamized blade sharpening process for true ultra-sharp blades, the DK4 Broadhead from NAP. Hunt with confidence. No, our broadcast has not gone into uh, outer space, or has it not been abducted by aliens either? This has not become Independence Day on LSR TV for the SMB Cup Series. Uh, that is actually a camera from the Ferris wheel that is virtually inside the road course that normally is used during the uh, the road tw the Daytona Rolex 24, but uh, also used for the Daytona road course. So, hey, uh, I like that camera angle. Looks kind of sharp, but I don't think it's something we will continue to advertise. With that said, let's give you the starting lineup for tonight's event for the Hornady Ammo 122. By the way, our Starting lineup is presented by ComServe Wireless. Over 20 locations located in three states, Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. ComServeWireless.com for more information. Proud to be a Verizon Wireless dealer. On the pole, Braxton Weeks in the 15 to the outside. Evan Coleman, row number one. Row two is going to find the driver of Matt Dyer and Joshua Alt. And uh, that'll be up row number two real quickly. Row number three is going to be the 54 of Jack Ely. I said watch him. I think he's fast here tonight. And Ross Tatum in the number one makeup row three. Row four going to be the nine of Spencer Hardison. Another one to watch. And right next to him, another one to watch. That is going to be the 29 of Rob Shearwood. We move on to row number five. Lee Fournette in the 14 to the outside. Keenan Massey in the number four. The 14 and four. Those your top ten. Moving on to row number six. Brockton Packard in the number 24. Caleb Smith in the number 12. That is your top 12. In row seven, going to be the seven of Christian Gardner. And the 96 of Zach Peterson. And the green flag's out, so we'll go uh, just get that out of the way real fast. Yeah, let's fast. continue. Yeah, I was going to say green flag is in the air. We are underway. And uh, the other drivers that are in this race include uh, Christian Gardner in the 7. We've also got Caleb Smith in the 12. We mentioned Jonathan Woods, Tucker Wingo, Cody Terry, Jacob Grant, Robbie Helms, Matthew Gilliams. Green flag is in the air. We are road course racing. Kicking asphalt, Daytona road course green. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, Wesley, our our static cam did not work very well. It uh, it, uh. it apparently was on the road or the oval, so we had to avoid it here tonight. Unfortunately, but uh, you know, a little disappointing there. I figured it would, but I, I want to point out. I think that uh, trips up. They did not start a full lap here. They started a short uh, start there, and that's what threw me off. That's why our grid uh, had to be rushed there, but. Uh, oh, wow. I haven't yeah. seen that before. They usually do a complete lap. Yeah, I, I was fully checking that out myself, and I was like, okay, now this is this is definitely a difference. You would have thought they would have made a whole complete revolution around the racetrack or uh, a cycle before the green flag fell, but unfortunately that's not the case. But anyhow, we're underway. Race is underway, and the number 15 is the leader. That's going to be Braxton DeWeese of the number 15 machine. Coleman in second spot, Matt Dyer third, and that's the way they stand right now as they move up to the high banks into turn number three. That would be a part of the big two-and-a-half-mile Daytona International Speedway. However, this is the road course, and they're getting ready to work their way through the NASCAR chicane off the corner here. There's that sharp chicane we were talking about, the inner loop if you want to use it, and there's that winding road. A little mistake, and it will cost you, and we are one lap in. 33 to go here at Daytona, Charles. Yeah, it's going to be a, a good race. And you can already see here just how, uh, you know, spread out they're already getting. We're going to this angle just for that reason. You can see how spread out they really are on this track. But Rex and Louise still out front. And again, this is a track where you just have to kind of hit your marks 
but right behind right. him is that 51 of CEM Motorsports uh, of Coleman. Coleman is running him down. That gap a little while ago uh, was a little bit bigger. It has since kind of shrunk down, but still Coleman not right there. He's got his work cut out for him as Braxton DeWeese. Definitely a uh, front runner here. He was fast in practice. He's been fast here, but so was Coleman. He was those two of those names in the top five that we were told to look out for. So Braxton, Deweese, Coleman, Evan Coleman, one and two. Matt Dunn for third. Joshua Altis, again, the inaugural winner here in Daytona. He is currently fourth. He's in the playoffs. He won the first race of the season, defending champion of the series. And, you know, Charles, could he be a repeat winner here? Could he win the big Speedway event and sweep here at the road course tonight? Yeah, that is the one thing uh, that has eluded this whole entire uh, series, and that has been a repeat winner. You know, you, you get those uh, races or those series – uh, where it's just dominated uh, by a right. particular driver. And that particular driver I'm thinking of was actually uh, stopped here uh, by team speak a little while ago. Uh, he left quickly. I think he might have been in the wrong, uh, wrong radio communication area. But uh, Garrett Mates, he's one of those, if he shows up, you expect him to be doing good and winning and uh, dominate. But that is not the case with this series. But uh, we do have some battles starting to brew here between the 54 of uh, Jack Ely and Hardison in the nine. Those two uh, are fairly close together. So my question is this, Charles. Could we see a strategy come from Grant where he pits? while everyone else will stay on, on the racetrack. And that could try to put him in the proverbial catbird seat of trying to cycle back around and pick off these positions. Because we know there's not going to be a yellow flag unless there's like a demolition derby. Yeah, and it looks like uh, the uh, five of Grant's already been through a demolition derby. Uh, again, uh, we I didn't go back and look to see what happened to him a little earlier. Uh, as you see right there, he's got heavy, heavy damage. But, you know, he already had to go through the pit, so there was really no reason to uh, keep it too close an eye on that Grant as we knew he was going to have to uh, serve that penalty. But uh, in the meantime, he's picked up heavy damage to the rear and heavy damage to the uh, front of the car. And there's uh, one other car that's been down pit road, and that's Matthew Williams, who uh, we accidentally forgot last week had not. Uh, he has a win, and uh, we uh, accidentally forgot to put it in there. That was our bad. Uh, but he does have a win, and he is having some severe connection issues here tonight. But I don't see anybody else uh, currently that but has that's damage. Okay. But that's okay, Charles, because like you said, he has a green bar. He has a win. So with that being said, he could call it a night and park it and say, man, I'm not doing this road course race. But he knows he's going to the postseason. Yeah, and if you look here at the 96 uh, of uh, Zach Peterson and that uh, Bona Collector uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, that is a uh, Chevrolet. Uh, you see the damage on his, so uh, possible contact between those two. But uh, I also want to point out is we got one off pace, and that is going to be the 22 of Cody Terry as uh, he goes off the track there a little bit. So our first real incident that we've caught there uh, from the 22 of uh, Cody Terry going off track. Cody Terry keeping an eye on him off horse there in the number 22 machine. He sits 18th right now on the racetrack. Of course, Cody Terry, we're top out. They work their way back around the speedway. Cody Terry, part of MP Motorsports, the driver out of Gastonia, North Carolina. And, uh, the gap. We're underway here at Daytona, the Daytona International Speedway Road Course. We're working lap number four of 34, so we're currently working lap three completed. And, of course, Braxton DeWeese. You see Evan Coleman, he's in second. The interval is almost 1.016 seconds as they hit the high banks in the turns number one and two. That's actually turn seven of the Daytona Road Course. Girls could tonight be the night for Braxton the weeks. He finally get to predict Vic could he finally get to victory lane after so much bad luck? I definitely he could as we go on board with him as he's he's hitting his marks right now and that's one of the keys to this track. 
uh, again, uh, absolutely love uh, Josh uh, Altus there. He uh, sends over on his lunch break. He sends over uh, all of the uh, stuff that we need to know about here because, uh, you know, we don't have the time to uh, attend every practice they do uh, and everything. We'd love to. We just don't have the time to do it uh, with the other uh, league obligations we have. But uh, keys to the race, stay on track. Well, check mark there. Well, Deweese is doing that. Smooth shifts. Sounds pretty good to me. We're about to hear him make one probably here in a second. And he's making smooth shifts. Uh, avoid a wheel hopping. I did see him wheel hop a little bit in practice, but I haven't seen that here in the race. Uh, and, of course, they are local cautions only. Uh, will not throw a full course caution unless multi-car wreck. And he is set right now, uh, Wesley, because... There's not a whole lot of cars that are bunched up together, so the odds of a full course caution are very slim. And with almost a 1.2 second lead, if he can keep extending it further and further, he's going to be able to come in, get four tires of fuel around lap 10 or so, get back out and keep going, and he'll never miss a beat. That's exactly right. And again, this uh, this uh, continues to, to tamper along really, really quickly. We have Deweese leading the way. That's the driver of the number 15 machine. Braxton Deweese, Evan Coleman in the number two spot, Matt Dyer. I'll tell you, Charles, let's talk about Matt Dyer because, you know, we've kind of had our quarrels in the past. And I just point blank told him one day, man, you want more mic time? You want more TV time in the broadcast? Get out there and do something. And he did. And he's really improved. The driver, of course, in the number 88 machine is who I'm referring to, Matt Dyer out of Santa Rosa, California. And uh, again, I, I think he's got a great combination by getting hooked up with the race team that he's involved with. Uh, Matt Dyer, again, you know, just kind of in his, you know, being changed. Maybe, maybe that pep talk with CEM Motorsports got some type of fire under him. And he's really been able to show his strengths here in the last couple of races. Yeah, he is definitely uh, good. And uh, obviously, y'all have had y'all's little quarrels. Uh, one of my favorite drivers, uh, and, and I won't lie, the, the, one of the main reasons I started liking him is he always had something uh, just utterly ridiculously funny on his pit board. And you know, Wesley, you've done NASCAR. That is one of the yes. big ways to know where your pit stall is uh, on pit yes. road. It's to put something silly on there. You know, my when I watch NASCAR, my favorite driver, obviously Kevin Harvick, he had the nickname Happy. He had a little happy face with flames coming out of its head or something. But, uh, you know, he was Happy Harvick, and they utilize that. It's really cool to see the cool things these people put on their pit boards, and they can do that here on iRacing, too. So, Deweese is on in front. Coleman in that number two position. Matt Dyer third. Joshua Altus is in fourth. Spencer Hardison, also a winner on the series, along with Altus in the top five. Massey, we're not really mentioning him real quickly. Let's show him. He's in the sixth position in that number four machine. There he is right there. Working his way through the road course. And having a little bit of a connection issue for him as well. And uh, I'm noticing the, that. And we got one going around. It's Cody Terry again. And uh, we'll quickly take a look at this one again. We won't get full course cautions, but we will take a chance to look at the swag replay just uh, so they'll get a little bit of love in here tonight. And uh, we'll see what exactly happened. Again, I imagine it probably just uh, hit one of these rumble strips and around she goes. But there were actually several cars. And no, oh, right there, just looped it around. Yeah, that's and, and there, you know, that's the second time we've seen Cody Terry have problems with the number 22 car here, Charles. For sure. Yeah, just not having the, uh, the luck he wants here tonight. And taking a look. You know, we were just watching this battle as uh, Coleman had managed to reel in Braxton DeWeese from 1.2 seconds to 0.7 seconds, seven tenths of a second. And uh, then just like that, the gap grew to 1.0 again. But now look at it. Now it's a uh, 0.83 again. He's reeling him in when they get on these long straightaways. You'll see right here, it's gonna drop 0.783. 
and it'll drop a little bit more. And then Braxton DeWeese is being a wheelman here tonight. When he's gaining the time over the 51 of Coleman, is in the corners. DeWeese, Coleman, Dyer, Altus, Massey, Hardison, Burnett, Sherwood, Packard, Gardner, all in the top 10 as they work their way around the racetrack. Again, this should be hopefully a fairly quick race because the sleek is only 34 laps in the Hornady Ammo 122 presented by the Mountain Out Outfitters as well. Uh, here on LSR TV, Sierra and Sports and iRacing Live, there is Coleman in the purple number 51. Now that's a pretty interesting color there. Yeah, it is a very interesting color at that kind of a purplish pink. Uh, you know, when I see this car, you know the first thing that comes to mind, Wesley? Uh, cotton candy. No. BJ Duvall, one of our employees, <laughs> would love this car right here. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to mind when I saw this car. But, you know, we're about to see this car here in a minute. Is they're going to be coming down pit road? They're on lap seven they right are. now. They are, yes. Uh, you know, pit stop's going to be somewhere between 9, 10, 11, somewhere in there. Uh, of course, uh, we'll probably uh, work it out through, uh, you know, the pit stops here. And then, uh, you know, we got to thank the sponsors. We're not going to get those uh, caution breaks uh, that we typically would get. So we just have to, uh, to, you know, suck it up a little bit and grit it and go to a commercial break. And uh, hopefully we don't miss anything important. But, of course, you know, if we do, Wesley, we'll, we'll tell the uh, great fans about it when we come back. But the battle for the lead really is the biggest battle on the track. It's kind of fluctuating, but it is, uh, I would consider it still a battle. Yeah, that's true. Very true. And we are going to start to see pit stops. So this is what we're going to do. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, pit stop round number one. The Daytona International Speedway Road Course. Coverage for the SNB Cup Series. When we return, LSR TV, CRN Sports, iRacing Live. Welcome, everyone, to the Bone Collector North American Whitetail Championship. No doubt the most exciting championship tournament that's ever hit the whitetail hunting industry. It's going to be broke down into 14 different regions. It's broke down to be fair, but it's broke down to celebrate the everyday hunters. This is one of the most unique championships has ever been thrown. Let's get to competing. Let's get to having some fun. Bone Collector, it sounds like a horror movie, but it's not. It's all about uh, the wonderful world of outdoor sports like the Appalachian Hauler Hunters and the Mountaineer Outfitters. Welcome back to our coverage on CRN for audio, LSIR TV, live simracing TV.com, and on iRacing Live. Round number seven of the SB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. It is the Hornady Emma 122, Wesley Outland, Charles Wooten, and we are coming up on pit stops here any moment now, and still Braxton DeWeese leading the way. Can there the man are. in the number 15 pick up his first win? He is now coming down the pit lane. Pit stops have begun. It's Fernetian. Hardison is in. Hey, Tucker no. Wingo on pit lane. Yeah. Ely and, and Smith. Oh, just like that, uh, you know, nine to ten laps, we called it. They're in. That's uh, what we I told figured. you. I had a feeling. And it uh, looks like that Old Spice number 12 of Caleb Smith going to get a little damage repair. Now they're beating and banging with the hammers. And then uh, they get that car back in the tip-top shape. The question is, when are your leaders going to come down? That's really what uh, yes. you know, you're looking for. Uh, obviously, these guys ahead of them a little bit going to try to uh, maybe short pit it a little bit. Uh, and uh, get a little bit of an advantage if they can. And uh, Jacob Grant has just been struggling here. As you see him almost overshoot the corner a little bit, but he hangs on to it. But Braxton DeWeese 
you know, if he's going to come in, we'll see if he's going to do it this time. He may try to stretch this out to maybe lap 10 or 11. Well, again, you just have to wait and see as uh, we uh, unfortunately don't have these guys on the radio to say, hey, I'm coming in this time. Uh, so, we, you know, it's uh, just a guessing game for us. And That's look, right. he is coming in. So he's coming in, and it looks like Coleman's going to come in with them. So is Matt Dyer. The question is, and yeah, no, Altice not going uh, to. I'm trying to trip you up, and I got myself, and he does come in. But uh, Joshua Alt is going to come in, and he will do it. But four tires and fuel, Wesley, I think for everybody, especially here at a road course. And there you see pit stall one, the driver out of Miamisburg, Ohio, from the Buckeye State. Entering, exiting. Oh my goodness, the pace car crash? Or is that the way the pace car? What well, the, the pace hell? Car, he, just <laughs> <laughs> he likes to uh, stay as close to the wall as he can. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I mean, that out. pace car looks like it's in the wall, nose to nose. I mean, I just caught that. You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean the, I'm, I'm calling the race, but I'm like, Swoop. Pace car. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, the pace car is a very interesting one here at the road course. But, uh, you know, I, on top of that, I wanted to point out uh, is there's no, let's see, there is somebody on pit road, but let's go to the one real quick uh, in that uh, body armor um, number one uh, forward Mustang. And watch pit road. This is uh, Ross Tatum. Watch when they come right. out of pit road, other than the fact the pace car's in there. This, look how skinny this road is trying to maneuver around this place. It seems like it gets skinnier and skinnier, and he smacks the wall, actually, a little bit coming out of pit road. That is a very tight pit road to get out of, Wesley. Off of pit road, there's Tatum, Ross Tatum. He's got a win on the series, his number one Ford. Body armor. I love body armor. Charles, you know this. You know body I love my body good, armor. Especially the watermelon, stra strawberry watermelon, I believe it is. That's some good uh, stuff. I'm a fan of the tropical. I'm a fan of tropical coconut. Tropical? I don't think yes. I've had tropical. Maybe it's kiwi strawberry or something like that. And blackout berry. Blackout berry is good, too. Well, I'll have to, to try okay, some of these. Okay, we're promoting a business that does not sponsor us. But anyhow, I love I love body armor. Well, they should. But <laughs> anyway, the, and... Definitely good, some good stuff. But speaking of good, he's doing good. That is still Braxton Deweese. He now has a 2.1. I think a 2.5 second gap over Coleman in second place. Deweese is doing everything he has to do. He's marked off the, all four of those check marks so far. Uh, again, this is not a check it off and you're done kind of uh, deal, though. You have to check it off, but, you know, when it's racing, unlike a lot of things, you may check off clean racing, but you can't officially write that down in pen. It's in pencil right now until this race is over. Hopefully nothing uh, happens to him, and he maintains that lead, but right now uh, he's doing it. He just has to do it for another 24 laps. Race is continuing on, rolling along. As DeWeese came down on the pit lane, exited as the leader. But things fall into place for the driver finally of the number 15 out of Miamisburg, Ohio, for CEM Motorsports. DeWeese. And that number 15. And DeWeese doing My apologies. A good is, it high, is he high five racing now? I think he's high five racing. Oh, uh, wait. Yes, it is. High five racing. It is high five racing. My apologies. I think I said CEM Motorsports. I meant high five racing. I had Evan Coleman on the brain. Evan Coleman of the car number 51. Now he is a part of CEM Motorsports, the driver in the number two position. Yes, and that is. is the way things stand right now. Yeah, and uh, again, that's that uh, Pepto Bismol uh, highlighter, purple, yellow, pink car there going on. But it looks good. I like the coloring on it. But behind them, Matt Dyer. So after pit stops, your top three haven't changed at all. Is uh, even though we're not going to a side by side, flip your top five and look at it there. Top three: Deweese, Coleman, Dyer have not changed, and for that matter, uh, 
Joshua Altus in the 94 has been in fourth place this pretty much this entire race. Uh, not sure on uh, Fournette. I believe he's kind of rotated in and out a little bit. But your top four have not changed since the start of this race, Wesley. They have just maintained a steady pace and kept this car moving forward in the right direction. That's exactly right. Allblade.com top five. You just saw that, but we are not going to commercial break just yet. Uh, so they're going to be pitting again here around lap number 20 and lap number 30. So we do know that they're going to have to pit again within five laps to go in this race if they follow the same strategy. Yeah, they're going to have to with the 23 laps to go. You know, typically, uh, Wesley, we uh, we uh, put it up there. We switch it over to uh, from laps of to the two go laps uh, when we right. get down to 20. But, uh, you know... It, not going to be the case. We'll probably switch that with about 10 to go because 20 to go at a road course like this, that's, uh, well, what would you say, equivalent to probably about, you know, 50 or 60 to go at an oval track. It's a long distance still. So uh, while the numbers seem small, it's not going to be as small as you might think. As uh, we'll just keep an eye on everyone again. Everybody really getting spread out, everybody hitting their marks, but Braxton DeWeese looking uh, to try to get this, and he's going to have lap cars coming up, but they're going to get out of his way. That is the 96 of Zach Peterson. He gets out of the leaders and second place away. He's not going to try to make uh, any moves on them. There's really no point. He's currently now one lap down. You know, just talk about how respectable a move that is as a driver to let the leaders go and not try to hold them up at all. So Braxton DeWeese, Evan Coleman, Matt Dyer, Joshua Altz, and Massey currently right now the drivers in the top five. Fernet, let's talk about Fernet real quick here. Let's give some love to the 14. Cody Fernet out of Chapel Hill, Tennessee for Banff Motorsports. He has really been impressive. Even though he's smoking tires, squilling, hitting those turtle strips. Let's mention that word turtles. They're like rumble strips, if you will. But you hit them, you can damage your car. Virtually. Yeah, so, I mean. With that being said, we watched the 14 of Cody Fournette. And Charles, I have to say, but I didn't mean to cut you off, but we have really seen a, 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 a really great improvement in the 14 car. When he first started, caught up in accidents, caught up in getting this car damaged, mechanical problems. Take a look at the... Oh, never mind. Uh, as we get ready to ride on board here with Fernet in the 14. Um, yeah, right now. Doing really, really good. And uh, just a strong run for him outside the top five in the 14 car. Yeah, and I wanted to go to this view here. This is, uh, we got a camera stuck in his nose here. And uh, we did to talk about as we go down here, the difference between those rumble strips and the turtles. And you're, I believe you're about to see, no, uh, you're not going to see the turtles just yet. And actually, we might hear coming up. We'll see. Is uh, That's just a little rumble strip right there. As he hits the grass as well. That's not going to do anything really to your car. Those are just, you know, what you might see on your highway, Wesley. Just a little bit of a, you go over them. They don't make a whole lot of noise. But uh, right. when we see one of the turtles, we'll definitely point them out. But those turtles are way different than the uh, the rubble strips of this track. There's a turtle right there. There's your turtle that we were talking about. There's oh. some turtles right there. Look at and the turtles. Look one. out. Oh, he's going to hit it. Oh. oh. That's, these that's are not, the These are snapping like. turtles. Yes. These are snapping turtles. They're not friendly. No, they are not friendly <laughs> at all. And if you miss one or hit it, they will snap your car too, big time. That's so, right. Yes, uh, sir. He definitely missed that corner by a long shot. He had to go under the turtles, uh, which is a smart move. One thing they can do to your car too is they can mix up that splitter on the front pretty bad if you hit it hard enough. So you got to be really careful. Uh, getting around these, but uh, you don't typically see them except for the parts of the track where they added turns at that aren't normally there. These parts in here are already here. They built this track and they built it in, so you don't really need them. Uh, but uh, where they built the turns in after the track was already there to make it the road course, those are those are deadly when it comes to your car. You're exactly right. So let's take a lap. High above, thanks to all American pools. 
with a lap around the, oh, Tatum on pit road. Holy cow, that's not good. No, Tatum on pit road. Good news, he's locked in, so we'll uh, continue as of land. As uh, we'll go, let's see which camera. There we go. We'll get to the drone camera here uh, and uh, just go around this lap here with our uh, race leader, Braxton Luis. Yeah, I'm going to take a lap around here with uh, the driver. Give me one second to uh, pull up the information that I was looking for. And I'm going to give you the full description of what is the Daytona International Speedway road course as we are getting everything into place here and I'll, I'll give you a full description of what it is so you all know for sure. Okay, so we need to first find a car that is at the start finish line. So let's first find a car at the start finish line, whoever we could at random. Let's see if we can get somebody. Well, we're gonna ride on board. Is that Hardison in nine? That is Hardison in the nine. That's Hardison in the nine. He's already got a win. Okay, for CEM Motorsports, he's coming through the trial now. This is your start finish line, okay? Through the start finish line, down into turn number one. A winder, a left, into turn number one. One number, will turn one, will be coming to a little sharp curve. Right there, you see a little wiggle giggle there? That's turn two. Turn two will then turn into what is known as the International Horseshoe. Turn number three. They're on the International Horseshoe. They'll work their way up speed, up the straightaway, if you want to call it that. And now they come on to what is known as the dog leg. See the dog leg? Like you see at Charlotte, Atlanta, or at the, in Texas, that's the dog leg. Through the dog leg, they'll make their way, that's turn four and five, to the West Horseshoe. And they have clear turn five. That's the West Horseshoe. Then he'll turn on to turn number six right here to the in and out there you see the in and out and he's back on the big part of the speedway here at daytona the two and a half mile daytona international speedway which is now part of turns number seven and eight nascar turn one nascar turn two he'll clear them he's now in turn eight of the road course to the back straight away the daytona super speedway stretch the super stretch will then become the bus stop in the turn number nine, that sharp turn. You gotta watch the way you precisionly make your way through there. In the turns nine and 10, the bus stop becomes a chicane. Back on the big speedway. In the turn 11, NASCAR turn three. Turn 12, NASCAR turn four. And as they make their way through turn number four, back around, look out for those snapping turtles. They'll come after you one last time into what was the new designed NASCAR chicane. 13, 14 turns back to the start finish line. And that, that's a lap, Charles Woot. And fans, viewers, listeners around the Daytona International Speedway road course. Yeah, it is a uh, big monster of a track. It was big enough before they decided to put road course there, but man, it's a monster of a track. And, uh, you know, uh, to uh, segue into another monster. That is the monster lead that Deleese has right now. 3.66 seconds over your second place. Now I think it's 3.7 over Coleman. Braxton Deleese is determined to get this win, get locked into the playoffs. You can see those brake rotors just glowing red and orange as he comes into the corner. But hey, he is on a mission to get the uh, win here. And I want to point out that you have to go all the way to fourth place of Altus before you find the first driver that's actually locked in. So your three drivers on podium are not technically locked into the chase two of them are in it but not locked in but here's the thing here's the thing as we just mentioned you know do you help your fellow driver we saw monday night with the uh the the the, the ezra pro series we saw team dark horse racing finish one two three at talladega but there was casey nodding a teammate to Dark Horse Racing that even though he was a lap down, he gave the assist to Brian Wartz to help him pick up the win. Could we see the same thing happen here? A driver that has already won races, they're in the playoffs. Do they oh. give the assist to help a driver that doesn't have the playoffs? In trouble, 54 goes around. Jack Ely. 
Again. He's already a lap down. He spins in the corner of the racetrack right between the dog leg. Oh, he and, had just uh, come off pit road, too. He was making his second stop. Oh, as, wow. Uh, yeah. We'll quickly watch this as uh, Cody Fournette also down pit road. And uh, fresh tires or not, he just got in here a little hot. And yes. right there, just gets it in hot, spins it around. And, and that's inside the international horseshoe. And there you see it. Man. That's unfortunate and no for caution. him. Yeah, no and caution. Yeah, no caution going to be coming out for him. As we have more drivers going to be uh, coming down, uh, Packard coming down, Smith Gardner on pit road. I imagine we'll see more people coming down as well uh, here But shortly. you know, Charles, Charles, I'm noticing, bud, they pitted around lap 9 and 10. We ain't hit lap 20 yet. We're at halfway through this race next time by. They're pitting quicker. Yeah, Could we see the strategy be to cut these stops in half they could be and i think some of these guys pitted a little bit earlier last time as well so they're gonna have to come down a lap or two sooner but drivers like deweese are on lap seven you're top right now five drivers are seven laps in and uh we'll see if deweese does cut it short uh or if he's gonna run it out but strategy definitely has to be used here to road course because again you can't rely on a caution to come out because the only way a full course caution comes out is if there's three or more cars involved and uh, as right. we've seen already that's not going to happen here tonight we are probably going to go caution free for this entire race could we see that happen that's the question I, I do. we see him go caution free? Are we going to see a big wreck? Do you think we'll see a big one? I, I just I don't see it happening. And I don't see it happening. Uh, you know, stranger things have happened. So, uh, you know, if, if one or two cars get spun out and then people catch them and, you know, some more spin out and the group gets bigger, we could potentially see something. I'm not going to count anything out. But then again, I, I'm not going to count anything uh I'm not going to say we are either. I'm going to be neutral on this one, but, you know, right. based on facts, I don't see us having a full course caution here tonight. As Braxton, though, he's still opting not to come down. We'll see if he comes down this time. Would be completing lap number eight on this stint. And we are halfway home. We're going to go side by side. See if don't miss the thing. Our coverage returns in a moment. The SB Cup Series, round seven from the Daytona International Speedway Road Course, presented by Mountaineer Outfitters, Appalachian Hauler Hunters, and Hornady MO 122. Coverage again for the second half on LSR TV, CRN Sports, iRacing Live. We're based out of West Monroe, Louisiana. Do custom racing. We'll do any, actually any shirt. We'll do uh, schools, churches, fundraisers. We do a ton of event shirts, uh, as you can see on our board here, uh, all around our uh, banner. Personalized. I mean, it, we'll do anything. It doesn't matter to us. We got the custom rugs. Um, we use all the, you know, top quality shirts, you know, inks and everything, uh, hoodies, um, hats. We do embroidered hats, uh, embroidered shirts. Uh, you know, just you can call us for anything. Uh, we do offer the bag and fold uh, to where we, you know, you can receive them and they're already labeled and tagged and bagged, uh, ready to give out to your customers. So, so you can just call us and just tell us, hey, this is what we're looking at doing. And um, if we're going to put the car on there, it is 125 quantity minimum. Uh, if it's without the car, it's 60 quantity minimum. That's strictly on the racing stuff. Um, if it's a business or something, if you just race on Texas shirts, you know, it's a little bit differently. Um, you know, you can call us. It just depends on your quantity and ink colors everything is hand drawn i mean everything we don't photoshop anything onto it onto a shirt or anything like that everything that we we go through everything is drawn and which is the reason for the uh, art fees because uh, we do have several graphic artists that draw for us and um you know they're really good so, yeah. so what we do is is on any any package that you do we can we can mix and match we can do any colors you can do purple red blue green and do the rest black it doesn't matter to us uh with your design on there, we can do hoodies. We can do hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, tank tops. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, just it's, it's almost limitless what you can do, and you can put all that together in that package to make that minimum, you know, requirements. They can call us 318-278-7191, um, or they can email us at bulletprooftees uh, at yahoo.com, or they can go to the website bulletprooftees.com.
Well, you saw it when we were side by side, thanks to Bulletproof Tees. A mistake and error on the Ohio native Braxton DeWeese has allowed now Evan Coleman for CEM Motorsports to cause a lead change and be a new lead here just half halfway Evan Coleman now at the top spot Braxton DeWeese falls back to second not that far behind but we talked about this Charles you cannot make mistakes like this on pit road and that cost him yeah it costs him and uh, I think you'll gain it back obviously uh, Evan Coleman has been down pit road as well uh, so that little bit of mistake did cost him We've already seen Deweese was faster overall uh, in the race, so I don't know if he's going to be able to get it back. That is going to be something to uh, definitely figure out as we're going to switch this over here. There you go, 15 laps to go in this race. That's more than enough time to uh, for Deweese to get back by Coleman, but it's also enough time to make a mistake uh, by either one of these or anybody else on the track, but, you know, this may be something uh, we've been looking for here. This little mistake by Deweese, while it could be detrimental to his race, is uh, it has made the excitement in this race uh, go up tenfold here for the race lead. And no, we're not down the home stretch. We are because there's 15 laps to go, but 15 laps to go in road coursing. Racing is a lot, Charles. Yeah, you do the math there. Uh, I'll let uh, the fans do the math because. One, my mask go. Oh, is a shot in the shorts as a uh, Deweese just knocks the bumper off of the uh, 51 of Coleman. But as I was saying there, you know, 15 laps times two laps a minute, basically. Uh, I mean, you can do the math on there. That's still roughly at least 30 minutes of racing uh, that we're going to do. So, um,. Definitely uh, something to look out for. But, yeah, Braxton DeWeese just gave a shot to uh, the 51 of Coleman. Coleman, DeWeese, Steyer, Altus. Burnett, your top five. We're coming up on fifth laps to go. Welcome back to our coverage. Joining us for the s &B Cup Series, presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters and the Mountaineer Outfitters in the Hornady Ammo 122 on your home for sim racing, whether it's live on LiveSimRacingTV.com, iRacing Live, or listening to Flag the Flag on CRN at WeAreCRN.com. I'm Wesley Outlet, Charles Wooten, alongside Coleman and DeWeese. And right there, Battling for the lead. Whatever mistake DeWeese made, he's right back to the whip, and he is running down Coleman. Evan did really not get that big of an interval over Braxton. No, I don't and know. And there he is. Coleman just pulled over there. Let's take a quick look at that. I want to go back here and uh, see. Look at this bat. Look, just watch what Coleman did. Did Coleman realize potentially that... Uh, uh, Deweese was faster, or did he just not want another shot in the shorts there uh, from Braxton Deweese? Watch right here. As they go into the corner, he uh, he hits the brakes, slides up, and lets the 15 by. That was not a pass. I mean, I guess it was a pass, but Coleman just let Deweese by, uh, by for some can reason we just there. Say, can we just call it as it is? Surrender. He surrendered the lead back to Braxton. Yeah, he, he definitely surrendered it back to him. And you can already see the gap that they are getting there as uh, we uh, zoom out. Let's see if we can't get a good shot. There's the gap. Look how big of the gap that he's already gained on Coleman. So, yeah, I really do think uh, Coleman figured, you know, I would rather settle for second than trying to hold off Deweese. Although a win is you're locked in, but, hey, a second place you know, and not getting it tangled up with the leader, trying to hold on to a lead that you maybe don't have the car to hang on to to begin with, could still lock you in on points. I think it may have been a strategy call more than anything. Yeah, I think you're correct on that as this race continues along here. Taking a look a little further. 13 to go. And there's just not a whole lot of battles going on. You see uh, right there Tatum, who has just not had a uh, very productive night here tonight. Already locked in. Currently uh, one lap down in 14th position with 13 to go, like you just mentioned. 
Uh, so yeah. just uh, an unfortunate night for that uh, body armor number one uh, machine, but uh, he'll bounce back. I'm sure uh, we'll be watching to see him in the near future. But, you know, just to point out the gap, look at the gaps there on your uh, ticker on the left side of your screen. One second away, separating first and second. Then go to third, Matt Dyer, who's still been in third all race long here for the most part. 21 seconds behind your leader. Altus, 40 seconds behind. There are some serious, serious gaps between uh, your top five right now. And we saw Tatum have problems earlier in the number one machine, the winner earlier in the season. And now Ross Tatum sitting now in 14th as he works his way to the back straight away into turns number 11 and 12 after making through the bus stop chicane. NASCAR yeah, turn three. And then some ups and downs here just to uh, give a little comparison to last week at Dover compared to this week. Caleb Smith. Uh, got the win last week. And if we look to see where uh, Smith is right now, back in 10th uh, position, still a top 10, but not in the contention for the win like he was last week. Matt Dyer, second last week. He's currently running third. So a good yeah. uh, two-run stint for him. Joshua Altis finished third. He's in fourth right now. Another good one. Then you go back to Ross Tatum. Finished fourth last week at Dover. He is currently, uh, I believe, out of this uh, race uh, for the most part as far as the win. Uh, you know, he's not technically out of the race, out of the race, but, uh, you know, out of the contention for the win. Braxton Deweese, fifth. He is sitting there leading this one. So, uh, you know, when you look at your top five, top six there, for the most part, you're seeing some consistency there between drivers like Deweese, Dyer, and Altus. And there you see them making their way again through that uh, end of the road course after the international horseshoe to the dog leg and back onto the big part of the speedway on the in and out. Turns number six and seven now becomes turns one and two, NASCAR turn one and two. And 12 laps to go. The question is, Charles, when do they get and can be able to go for the finish of this race? Yeah, I, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. With 12 laps to go, you know they're going to have to come down because pit, uh, pit stops between, uh, between 9 and 10 laps. So they will have to come down again. Uh, these guys have been on their stints for about 4 to 6 laps is uh, what we're looking at. So uh, this could be interesting to see. And I want to point out, uh, no, he can't make it either. Uh, Someone like Packard and Tatum have one lap on their stint. They just came in, uh, so even they couldn't make it. So, yes, everybody's going to have to come in. The question is, when do you come in you know, and take those four Mr. Field goods and uh, fill it up worth the fuel? Eleven laps to go. There you see Evan Coleman. He's now 2.6, 2.7, almost 2.8 seconds back to the leader, Braxton Deweese. Yeah. And he's right there in that second spot. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if it was me, I, I personally think I would come in. Uh, let's see, you've been. That's a tough one. I don't know when I would come in, Wesley. Woo, as you see the uh, 51 of Coleman get real loose coming out of the corner of these tires, maybe getting a little worn uh, here. I would come in this time if I was the uh, the 15 uh, or the 51 of Coleman. You've got 11 to go. It's going to be 10 to go when you get to line. You can make 10 laps. If it was me, I would come down this time and get those uh, tires, get fuel, and be good to the end of the run. All right, so we're, we're talking strategy here. We're coming up on uh, 10 laps to go next time by. And you see Braxton always hitting his marks coming off of the NASCAR chicane on the back straightaway through the bus stop. He's in turn three now, NASCAR turn.
turn three, is turn 11 and 12 for the road course. Works his way now to turn number 12 through NASCAR turn four. Now comes through the NASCAR chicane. Turns 13 and 14. Back on to the racetrack. In lat to go. And, uh, you know, I was... Uh, Stop, surrender away, Jack Geely. <laughs> I didn't get the driver right, but I did say somebody should come down, and it's going to be, like you said, Jack Ely. He's already a lap down, uh, and if he's starting to come down a lap down, you know for a fact that here probably the next lap, if not the one after that, your leaders are yeah. going to start coming down as well. It's just a fact of the matter. That's how it's going to go. But the question is, will Evan Coleman try to short hit and uh, undercut to Braxton DeWeese, but it's going to be really hard to do because there you see Coleman, and there you see the leader. He's going to have to time it perfectly. Again, Wesley, you know this. You've been at the real race uh, races with NASCAR. One advantage you can use as a leader is if you can get a sizable lead, you know, you can come down pit road before your com your competitors see it uh, because they're too far back and they don't know when you're pitting and they might have wanted to come down when you did. But when they time, they see you on pit road, it's too late. Ten laps to go. We have to thank our sponsors. We'll do that real quickly. And when we return, we will take you to the checkered flag here tonight. The SMB Cup Series round seven from the Daytona Beach Road Course. The DK4 by NAP represents the next level of broadheads, providing you with fixed and mechanical blade technology in one devastating head. Available in both crossbow and compound models, the DK4 features a pivoting main blade, which eliminates deflection off bone and maintains momentum, while delivering true field point accuracy, as well as two deploying bleeder blades for an inch and a quarter secondary cutting diameter, equating to devastating wound channels. And with an internal blade retention system, there are no O-rings, collars, or rubber bands, just the confidence knowing that the blades will open on impact no matter your target. Featuring a bone-crushing trophy tip and diamized blade sharpening process for true ultra-sharp blades, the DK4 Broadhead from NAP. Hunt with confidence. Welcome, everyone, to the Bone Collector North American Whitetail Championship. No doubt the most exciting championship tournament that's ever hit the whitetail hunting industry. It's gonna be broke down into 14 different regions. It's broke down to be fair, but it's broke down to celebrate the everyday hunters. This is one of the most unique championships that's ever been thrown. Let's get to competing. Let's get to having some fun. And we'd also like to thank another sponsor, Mountaineer Outfitters. Mountaineer Outfitters, located in Newland, North Carolina, has uh, an opportunity for you to get all of your hunting needs, ammunition, ammo, and so much more located in North Carolina. Let them take care of you in Newland. That is uh, Mountaineer Outfitters as well. And I'm proud to be a part of uh, Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Finish time. Closing in. So are pit stops, Charles. And this is just shuffling up the leaderboard with under 10 laps to go. Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, we go back to Braxton Deweese. He came in while we were under commercial break. Unfortunately, that's, you know, going to happen sometimes. But the good news is, while the fans out there see the commercial, because we, uh, we've got big sponsors, you know, they make all this possible. Uh, he came in, he took four tires, fuel, and off he went. A flawless stop for the 15 of Braxton Deweese. In second place, well, he's your leader now. He was second at the time. The 51 uh, CEM Motorsports, Evan Coleman, he's coming down pit road. Again, he's going to need to make a flawless stop. He does have some damage to the back of his car, but he's going to need a good stop here if he wants to contend with Braxton DeWeese. Eight laps to go. 
Deweese is still on track. Coleman is on pit road. And he is down and away. Probably a flawless pit stop for him. And he's still in third. Yeah, and you know, I just mentioned there that he had that damage. He used his fast repair. They have one fast repair. He used it. That little bit of damage there, he's had a good run. You know where it came from, and that's when Braxton DeWeese uh, said, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, Karamba, I'm gonna just, just gonna give you a shot in the shorts there. Uh, and uh, he did so. And again, you know, Rubin's racing. He didn't wreck him. He just let him know, you know, the, the old Dale Earnhardt Sr. style. I give you one shot to let you know I'm here. Two shots, I'm getting irritated with you. And then, well, three, he probably just gets you out of the way at that point. But, uh, you know, it, you give someone a little bump like that, it's not intended to wreck them. It's just, hey, let you know I'm right. here. And he did just that, and he took the lead from it. Successful race here for Braxton Deweese and another good run for Matt Dyer as well, who's still in second place. Well, well, well. KD bar the door, ladies and gentlemen. And somebody call and throw an upset. Right now, Matt Dyer in the second position, but he's almost seven and a half seconds back to the leader of Braxton DeWeese to the yeah. line. And it's eight laps to go. Now make it seven to go for the 15 this time by at Daytona. Yeah, seven, you know, and, and it's seven long laps at that here because it's a road course. But if you're someone like Braxton DeLeese, this two-minute lap probably seems more like about 10 minutes trying to get around this place and do it fast and smooth at the same time, you know. And, and what was the one of Tatum uh, decided oh, no. he wanted to go uh, for the scenic route instead? And uh, I'm not sure. There's Tatum. As uh, I think Tatum just called it uh, quits. Here. So we'll take a quick look at that uh, swag replay. And uh, again, not sure exactly what happened to Tatum, but uh, he gets the gas here and just goes back to the future style. Never lifts. It doesn't look like. And yeah, he does lift, but uh, he hit the brakes and the brakes didn't work. Wow. So I'm not we'll sure what I think there. he zigged when he should have zagged on that play. <laughs> I, I <laughs> definitely think he did as of the 29 of uh, Rob Sherwood. Another one. We have not talked about him uh, too much, Wesley. He was somebody that uh, we were told keep an eye on. He was uh, one of the top four fastest in practice, but uh, has really had an uneventful night here as far as uh, being talked about. But he's sitting in seventh right now on the lead lap. Uh, just unfortunately hasn't been in the top five right. trying to get in for the win here. And, of course, Matt Dyer now going to fall. Yes, sir. Wow. And Matt Dyer w was one of those drivers that were honestly strong, had a really, really good car. And, and, and for the most part, mind you, uh, could have been one of these drivers to definitely just make an upset and do something crazy. And unfortunately, just uh, not for his doing right now. Luis, Coleman, Dyer, Massey, Burnett, your top five. Hardison, Sherwood, Wingo, Smith, Packard, your top ten. Now, if you're new to the series, watching our coverage on LSR TV, iRacing Live, or listening on Sierra and Sports with the SB Cup Series, presented by Abnaller Hunters, Mountaineer Outfitters as well for tonight's Hornady Ammo 122. As we approach the home stretch with six laps remaining. The blue are drivers that are in the top 10 looking for a win. Mathematically, drivers that have the green bars are winners. They are going to the postseason. And if you get somebody like Matt Dyer, who comes out of nowhere and can win this thing in the 88, like we're showing him, he goes to the playoffs. But yeah. he's got a long, long stretch to feel running down to Weiss and Coleman. Yeah, and you know, even, uh, I don't want to put in here, uh, we have this on the back and we're looking at the uh, point standings. 
uh, even if Deweys manages to not win this race, if he can finish second place, at the current moment, he is plus six points to the good uh, in the 10th position in the point standings. Brockton Packard is uh, negative six. Packard, by the way, if you keep an eye on him, he is back in a 10th position. Uh, so he's got a substantial uh, little gap between him. Even if he doesn't win, uh, he's going to pad that point standings just a little bit. Uh, Burnett is in sixth place. So, you know, roughly guessing here, I would imagine that uh, Packard being uh, six points out of the top 10, Fournette being 10 points out, based on how they're running in the race right now, we may see that position change, and that may put Fournette on the bubble in 11th place trying to get in, but again, four spots remain into the chase, whether it's points or wins, and uh, again, this could be the seventh different winner in seven races for season number two here for the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters, and uh, I don't think I've seen that ever in the history of LSR TV. Yeah, a pretty much sheer domination for sure, and they have done a phenomenal job. Matt Dyer, there you see him, but there's the leader. From Miamisburg, Ohio. Could it finally all come together? Put the ing missing ingredient that was needed to bake the perfect cake, the perfect batter, to make the excellent dough come together virtually for the driver of that number 15 machine. You see the brake runners also getting a little cherry red. So he's using up his brakes, but he's still hitting his marks and doing what he needs to do. One false error made during a pit stop where he overshot his pit stall and then it did cost him the lead about a lap later. <clears throat> it's been all Deweese and Coleman. Four lead changes amongst two drivers. And right now, coming to the line, under five laps remaining, four to go for the 15 at the start-finish line of Deweese. Yeah, you know, you talk about the perfect cake. I was eating cake earlier today. Don't ask me what flavor it was, um, because I don't think you want to know that answer. But uh, it, uh, it definitely is the uh, the perfect storm, the perfect cake, whatever you want to call it, as uh, he has put it all together here tonight with a... Uh, 21 second lead over uh, oh, 22 second lead over Coleman right now. Uh, he's really just has to uh, put it on cruise control and get his marks. Four lap to go. Deweese, Coleman, one and two. There's the interval almost 22.283 seconds back from one and two. Matt Dyer, nothing to be disappointed about. Matter of fact, if I think correctly, Matt Dyer, this will be his second straight race, finishing on the podium in the top three. Yeah, he definitely will. Nothing uh, to be ashamed of there. And uh, take a look at those. Let me pull those back up on my end here. Uh, just so I can see. Uh, yes, that would be the second uh, top three for him. And uh, That's right. we'll see uh, Joshua Altus. Had a good run. He is one lap down now back in 14th. So uh, he has definitely started struggling here. And you see there's no damage there. Uh, possibly uh, that little mistake he made on pit road as well uh, could have cost him as he did have to back up. And then he had to pull forward again on pit road. That cost him about, uh, let's see, about, 10, about seven seconds on pit road on during his last stop. Yeah. Four laps to go. Boy, oh boy, what a show they've put on. This one's coming down to the wire, folks. And what a race it's been. What a job by Braxton DeWeese. Even for making that devastating hiccup. He redeems himself. And look at him being in the catbird. Right there. Yeah, getting good. He, he set himself up perfectly here for tonight. 
Again, 23.2 second gap over uh, second place. I mean, it would literally take a miracle, uh, you know, for second place, maybe third place to uh, get this. You know, I don't think mathematically, if we get to one to go, I honestly think Braxton Luis could probably spin out a couple of times and still be able to make this thing work for himself as uh, he is just just trugging along right now. He's on a cruise control, and that's exactly what uh, needs to be done. As uh, let's see, uh, let, why not? Let's go on board with him or that, and just watch his uh, steering wheel movements here, as uh, he is very smooth behind the wheel. Yeah, definitely keeping an eye on him as these laps wind down with under three to go down. Three remaining. What a job, what a drive. For the man in the number 15. I know family, friends, loved ones, Chris DeWeese and more are going bookers right now with this awesome virtual performance that Braxton DeWeese has going. Could it finally pay off for the young man out of Miamisburg, Ohio? Deweese Coleman, one and two. His lead is 22 and a half sex. And Charles, it continues to grow as he takes two to go. Yeah, two laps to go as we ride still on board with him. He has some lap traffic coming into play, but I don't think it's really going to matter too much for him. Again, you could just kind of coast behind them. Don't, there's no reason he needs to lap whoever that is in front of him. Uh, again, just sit back and relax, and that's the 12 that's in front of them. Uh, of uh, Caleb Smith, your last week's winner right now. Currently, is he on the lead lap? He is on the lead lap. He is the last car on the lead lap, actually. So, uh, you know, another up and down in two weeks here for Caleb Smith. Winner last week, barely struggling to hang on to the lead lap right now. So, you know, it just goes to show you, you know, anything can happen in this series. You can go from winning to, uh, well, almost out of the race, not even a contender the next week. What a performance. What a drive. And it's all coming down to the end. He's on the back stretch coming off of the a stop chicane on the back straightaway. He's in turn 11 now, NASCAR turn three. Moving by lap traffic, just put a lap down to the 12 of Smith, Caleb Smith. We had him on the storylines earlier. Watching him, got to watch those brakes. Works his way through the NASCAR chicane in 13 and 14. He will come to the line. He will take the CRN. One to go, proudly sponsored by WeAreCRN.com. One more lap remains. What a performance. Braxton DeWeese. Could he finally win, Charles, in seven for seven? on the s &B Cup Series. Yeah, I think he's got this one in the bag. You know, and I'm going to say right now, Wesley, I'm monitoring our, the chat just to uh, make sure it stays nice and wholesome for our family viewers. Nice but, and wholesome. <laughs> yes. If, if he does not win this race, then it is on his team. Whoever runs their team YouTube channel said, and I quote from High Five Racing, back to uh, Braxton's luck, he better watch out for the Ferris wheel. Right. If he does oh, whoa, not win whoa, this, whoa, 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 don't go there. So apparently, uh, with his luck, uh, he's going to hit the Ferris wheel or something. I'm not sure. So if he doesn't win this, it's because of their own team. It has nothing to do with a uh, curse of the announcers. But I don't think that's going to happen as uh, he is no. coming to take the checkered flag here very shortly. Final time around in the turn to the back straight away off the turn two to the NASCAR. Turn two to the back stretch. Down the super stretch. He'll make his way into turns number nine and ten through the bus stop. Pain on the super stretch. That sharp turn winder back around. Onto the straightaway into turn number three. NASCAR. Turn three. Turn eleven for the road course. Working his way. And the growing interval of 25 seconds continues into turn number 12 off turn four. 
No try oval yet. Final NASCAR chicane in the 13 and 14. Put it on the books. Finally, finally, finally. Miami's Berg, Ohio's. Oh, Braxton Deweese is a winner. Finally, on the SB Cup Series. And seven for seven. Wow. Seven races, seven winners. Braxton Deweese moving on to the playoffs. He's locked himself in, got the ticket to ride on the playoff train as he's going to take a lap around. And remember, boys, do not celebrate until everyone's across the line. As you can see right there, this is what happened on that week one. If you look at the ticker, it says finishing. This race is not over yet. Uh, again, right. there's, there's no battles going on, so we'll stick with the leader. But until it says finish, this race is not technically over. And, uh, you know, you got to be careful there. Uh, even doing some uh, celebrating there with, uh, you know, bumps and uh, door slams or whatever it is you got to do uh, could cost you incident points. But uh, this race still <laughs> trying to finish up there. But, man... Finally, after all the ups and downs, Braxton DeWeese getting the win. Man, what a special time for sure. Finally. A winner. I know. This is a, this is such this is such a proud moment for him. I know his family. They're going crazy in the chat box. How about that? And where's second place at now? Has he got to the finish line yet? Uh, Could he be finally yep, he, reaching it? He is. He's Evan done. He has cleared the pits. Evan Coleman will finish in second. Matt Dyer third. Keenan Massey as we still continue to watch this celebration for Braxton there, and there you see it Charles, has changed I the think finish. that's the best way of saying it. The only way of saying it, like when Matt Joy said 20 years of trying, 20 years of frustration, Dell Earnhardt will come to the caution flag to win the Daytona 500 in 1998. I can say the same thing about our friend of the virtual world from Miamisburg, Ohio. Finally, finally, finally a winner on the SNB Cup Series. We've been watching this young man for a long time from back during the days of the Adrenaline I Racing League on Sunday afternoons, looking for a win, sometimes losing that virtual temper, getting penalties, and it cost him. But tonight, it works out great. He's baked the perfect cake, and he's a winner. Seven for seven. On the Cup Series for SNB, what an awesome series this is! Every Wednesday night on LSR TV, I Racing Live and CRN Sports. It definitely is, and while he burns it down, that of course means it is time to do one last thing before we talk to the drivers here in the post race show, and that is, of course, your unofficial race results. Unofficial race results presented by Sawblade.com. Um, finally, Braxton Deweese with an interval of almost 30 seconds picks up the win over Evan Coleman. Matt Dyer, no slouch there for him as well. The man out of California will finish for his second race in a row on the podium for third. Matt Dyer, Keenan Massey, fourth, but a redemption for him. Spencer Harness in fifth. Rob Sherwood is sixth. Cody Fernet seventh. Gerwingo finishes eighth. He's one on the series. And for everybody else on back, they're a lap down or more, including Caleb Smith ninth and Christian in the number 10 position. Yeah, 11th place is going to be Brockton Packard, followed by uh, Joshua Altis, who had a strong run but just couldn't capitalize on it at the end of the night. Uh, Jonathan Woods, uh, Jack Ely going to round out your cars uh, one lap down, followed by Robbie Helms, who we didn't get to talk about a whole lot, two laps down, Zach Peterson, two laps down, Ross Tatum, who uh, just uh, did not have a good night all around, finishes seven laps down, Cody Terry, who we saw having multiple issues here tonight in the 22 
20 laps down. Jacob Grant never recovered from that uh, penalty from last week that he had to serve here tonight. And uh, Matthew uh, Williams, who's already locked in 33 laps down, didn't complete this race. Uh, it's unfortunate for him, but he is locked in. And of course, that'll do it for your unofficial race results presented by sawblade.com here with the SMB Cup Series. When we come back, man, it's going to be special. Frank Sidowice, we'll talk to him in three lane, the other drivers on the podium as well. But this is going to be a special for that young man from Miamisburg, Ohio. Finally, a winner for High Five Racing. A big, big moment. We'll talk to him in victory lane. SB Cup Series. We're ten, we're, we'll continue from the Daytona Beach International Road Course when we come back. Just a moment, we'll grab these drivers. And uh, man, I know this is going to be an awesome celebration for the young man in the 15 car. The DK4 by NAP represents the next level of broadheads, providing you with fixed and mechanical blade technology in one devastating head. Available in both crossbow and compound models, the DK4 features a pivoting main blade, which eliminates deflection off bone and maintains momentum, while delivering true field point accuracy, as well as two deploying bleeder blades for an inch and a quarter secondary cutting diameter, equating to devastating wound channels. And with an internal blade retention system, there are no O-rings, collars, or rubber bands, just the confidence knowing that the blades will open on impact no matter your target. Featuring a bone-crushing trophy tip and diamized blade sharpening process for true ultra-sharp blades, the DK4 Broadhead from NAP. Hunt with confidence. Welcome, everyone, to the Bone Collector North American Whitetail Championship. No doubt the most exciting championship tournament that's ever hit the whitetail hunting industry. It's going to be broke down into 14 different regions. It's broke down to be fair, but it's broke down to celebrate the everyday hunters. This is one of the most unique championships that's ever been thrown. Let's get to competing. Let's get to having some fun. Welcome back to coverage of the SB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters, Mountaineer Outfitters, as well as tonight's event for the Hornady Ammo 122. When it's all said and done, a big win for the driver of Braxton Deweese. We'll talk to him in the number 15 in just a moment. But first, we'll talk to our top three drivers on the podium from the Daytona Beach International Road Course. Charles Wood, Wesley Outland here with you. And we're glad you're joining us for the post race wrap up. Matt Dodd. Meyer from California. Two races in a row on the podium. Matt, you continue to impress me race after race after race. Good job. Hey, thank you. It feels good, you know, that my luck is starting to turn around and I can, you know, start you know, finishing towards the front. Um, you know, I definitely knew I had the pace to be on the podium. You know, we saw it all week in practice. But, uh, you know, once, you know, the top two just pulled away, it was just kind of this cruise control. And uh, just because I knew I was faster than everybody else, so <laughs> it was a good race. It was a good show. Well, I got a couple of questions for you here, Mr. Dyer. One, do you think you had anything for the leader here? Obviously, we needed a caution that there, you know, there's no full course cautions without multiple cars involved. Uh, you know, were you maybe hoping some guys would just uh, wad it up together so you get a caution and, uh, you know, stack this field back up. 
Um, you know, maybe you know, a caution to make you know, feel closer to, to have strategy involved. But I knew I had no pace for Evan or Braxton, so it was really just you know, just trying to make sure I got on the podium in third place. But I, I, it would have been nice, but I, I would have loved to, you know, for it to be you know, just like this, stay green the whole time. Now, my last question here before we turn it back to Wesley uh, for sponsors, and that is, of course, that we, you know, you didn't. Uh... <laughs> Get a chair. We didn't get a chance to look, but uh, anything special on the pit board here uh, for this race? Uh, no, it was it was still the same thing. Yeah, you know, it was still the too sexy logo. So uh... <laughs> here we go. I we just wanted to hear him say it. Wesley, anything else for him? Ah, uh, nothing, buddy. I just uh, I, lo I love the too sexy logo, and uh, man, uh, when is enough going to be enough to be in on the podium and and uh, finally get get a win? Is it coming soon? You think? Uh, it really depends, you know, um, I think, cause I think they're switching, uh, North Wilkesboro to Chicago lane. So yeah, I might have a shot there if, uh, your chips fall in my favor, but, uh, maybe a Watkins Glen if, uh, if it goes right. But I mean, you, you never know. All right, buddy. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, thanks our sponsors and, uh, we'll holler at you next week. Yeah, yo, thank you guys for uh, your broadcasting each week, uh, you know, to Rep Sports and uh, Raise Energy. Uh, you could definitely shout out to them and Appalachian Hall of Honors. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys. All right, there's Matt Dyer. Again, the driver of that uh, number 88 machine. Two races in a row. The man out of Santa Rosa, California, will settle for the podium. Runner-up in the race is going to be the driver of the number 51 for CEM Motorsports of Evan Coleman. Evan, uh, your take on the race. You led some. There, matter of fact, four lead changes amongst two drivers, and it was between you and the winner, Deweese. But what is your take of this race and uh, finishing second tonight? Uh, Seconds, you know, kind of expected. Um, it was really the matter of who made the biggest mistake, really, because never at one point, I don't think, I think we, me and Braxton were like a tenth off of each other at the most. Um, so it was just really a matter of, you know, who didn't get a mistake, who didn't caught in, get caught in traffic. And I kind of just was the the loser at the end of that, dipping my left sides into the backside bus stop and then losing the car on old tires, which didn't help. But all in all, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just kind of just slightly disappointed because I wanted to see how it would have played out. Well, Evan, uh, second place, obviously nothing uh, to uh, be too disappointed in. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, good points run for you uh, moving into uh, getting, or getting closer to it, getting into the playoffs. You know. Uh, I always like to ask this question. It's kind of racing right now. Once we officially get into the playoffs, if you're locked into it, how much more, you know, stressful is it being in the playoffs versus getting to the playoffs? Um, for me, really, I'm just, I'm just racing. I mean, if you, if you really, if you think about it too much, you'll end up hurting yourself more often than not. But most of the time, if you're, outside looking in a lot of the pressures off of you because you have nothing to lose it's more so those people on the bubble that are going to be having the most pressure and then if everybody wins you know if we get different winners like we have so far then it's really going to be a pr uh, pressure between all those uh winning drivers to see who has the most points and then it goes back to the same thing i just said you know whoever's on the outside has nothing to lose but those people on the bubble are going to be scrap you know scrounging around scrapping for every single place they can get it. but it's really just mentally i mean i don't have that mental issue i'm just here to race and get points i'm not really too stressed about everything well you did a good run here tonight second place say any sponsor really card to uh, make it as fast as it is uh the rowdy energy my chief engineer matt and everybody over at kim motorsports you know and all those guys you know willie gray and all them you know, it's really helpful to get help from uh, Coke drivers every now and again to make you just a little bit faster. Well, and there you have it. Your second full ace runner up, Evan Coleman in the 51. And I believe, Wesley, you've caught up with our race winner, who uh, I have a feeling you're going to be uh, super excited and happy to be in victory lane. Finally, finally, finally.
in victory lane after seven different winners now on the SMB Cup Series. Man, what a great job, uh, Braxton. Always, what's going through your mind? But I, I mean, I, I've known you uh, as far as virtually uh, the uh, almost last the last couple of months, five six months almost with the Adrenaline I Racing League, and then uh, dealing with that and moving into the SMB Cup Series. And hey, you put it in victory lane. Finally, I know. Chris DeWeese, I know family people are cheering for you in the chat box. What is the emotions of number 15 right now? Uh, it's, it's great to be getting interviewed uh, after I won the race. About time. Uh, there have been multiple times I should have won uh, should have won a race and talked to you um, after I uh, got in victory lane. But, you know, we ran a pretty good race here at Daytona Road Course. I uh, felt really confident going in this race. Uh, I'm surprisingly really as you say, smooth here and caught it on pretty quickly. Um, I mean, I just love this racetrack. It's great to be in victory lane finally. All Charles, right. can anything yep. you want to throw out yeah, there? Yeah, oh. I, I got a ton of questions, but we got to limit ourselves. <laughs> Trying to come up with the one I want the most. You know, like uh, Wesley said, it's been a long time coming. We've been uh, we've been following your uh, i racing career here since uh, a uh, adrenaline i racing league coming over here. You know, seven races in here alone where you've had fast cars to finally put it all together. You know, does it make it any more special knowing that it was a road course you, and you know you didn't get this on you know okay well this guy wrecked out because you know he got caught up in the big one or anything that you actually just out drove the competition does it make it even better to get your first win here uh with the series knowing that that is how you got it and it wasn't just a luck win oh yeah i mean i think i oh, i let every lap except two it's it's great to dominate here at Daytona, especially Daytona. I mean, it's the world center of racing. It's the capital for NASCAR, as in the uh, Daytona 500, the biggest race in the world. It's just a big venue to win at. Uh, it's just uh, it's awesome, to especially win by 23 seconds. I, uh, you know, I never would have thought I would have dominated by that much, um, but glad we did it. Glad we got in victory lane. Um, Hopefully this starts uh, more of the good luck instead of bad luck. I hopefully I just needed that one win to start off the rest of the win, so we can see what so we I can got, do here. In the next I, 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 I got one more question for you, Braxton. Does does this win feel different because it's a road course win, or is the cliche a win's a win, and finally you getting a win make it special? You know, I think a win's a win. I think it's more special here, uh, considering it's green the whole time for 34 laps at a really long racetrack. Uh, turning left and right, shifting so much, um, it, you know, it's just a lot more work than a typical oval track. So it's uh, cool to be the one to win here. Um, it's just, I really don't know what to say. I, glad to win. Glad to win. That's all I can say. Glad to win. Man, our time is short. We can't be on here forever. But, uh, Thank your sponsors and uh, friends, family, loved ones. This is your time to acknowledge all of them right now. Yeah, I wanted to thank um, High Five Race for letting me drive the 15 car for them uh, in the Shake and Bake uh, series and for the upcoming Adrenaline series. Um, just uh, thanks to Appalachian Hall Hollers for sponsoring Shake and Bake Cup Series. Um, shout out to Zimmerman Concrete, the premier group. Um, Bennett's uh, NASCAR Technical Institute, uh, Jeff Schmidt Auto Group. Um, you know, just all all the all the sponsors and help we get. Uh, you know, um, Jacob Grant on the paint team is always making them great. So you know, that's awesome. And uh, thank, thanks to all the family and friends watching. You know, I I love all your support. I told you guys I don't get that win. I got the win. Hopefully we can get more. Definitely, bud. Uh, congratulations to you, man. And uh, hopefully it leads to more races to come. And you're in the playoffs. Oh, yes, I ain't got to worry about that. Now we got to win races. <laughs> Braxton DeWeese, winner of the SMB Cup Series, making it now the seventh different winner in seven races. We're halfway through the regular season. We move into the final seven races to make 14. Then it's on to the six races in the playoffs. Charles, this should be fun. Your thoughts as we wrap up the Daytona Road Course. Road Course race is uh, always fun. It never disappoints. And uh, we can uh, say we went caution-free. <laughs> 
you know, you know, it's always fun to uh, have a good, a clean race. Uh, this one, obviously, uh, we did have a chance for uh, full course cautions. It just didn't happen here. Uh, you know, someone who uh, has been fighting for a win for so long finally gets it, makes it even better of a race, knowing that you were part of the coverage for it. Uh, we'll be looking to see uh, what he can do here in the next future. Could we go eight for eight next week? Yeah, it's going to be a fun, fun time. Next week will be the round number eight of the series. And, uh, you know, could we see Matt Dyer finally break through and go to victory lane? Uh, of course, uh, all so many different drivers that we could mention that are really improving, uh, I think, in closing uh, for net. And, and uh, you know, Packard, things went good for him tonight. So many other drivers just... The amount of talent that is on this series, phenomenal. Car count a little down tonight, but I think it's because of road course racing and so much more. But when it's said and done, a big win for the driver of Braxton Louise for High Five Racing. Again, Evan Coleman, second, Matt Dyer. Two races in a row, even after Thanksgiving break, finishing on the podium in the top three. Hey, cover again next Wednesday night. We'll do it again at uh, again 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, with coverage of the S&B Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters, Mountaineer Outfitters, and tonight's, again, race is brought to you by Hornady MO this evening for the Hornady MO 122. For Charles Wooten, I'm Wesley Outland from the a snowball derby in the hotel high on the 20th floor in Pensacola, Florida. Congratulations to Braxton Deweese. Winner, making it now seven on the S&P Cup Series. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Hope we have a better new year in 2021. And please keep on praying for America. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of 52 Media LLC and iRacing.com Motorsports Simulations. LSR TV would like to thank you for your support and we hope